Good morning. Uh, so we are here to celebrate the 12th anniversary of the Calvary IPMU. So here is the plan for today, this morning. So I'm going to talk for about half an hour, telling you about the state of the institute. And then we'll, we'll have a 30 minutes talk by Professor Yokoyama about uh, diverse issues, in particular about some of the unconscious biases that we may have. And we'll have about an hour uh, of uh, self-introduction by uh, new postdoctoral fellows, followed by lunch. So let me get, get started. So this is a photo roughly a year before, uh, when uh, uh, Hitoshi uh, stepped down and I became the new director. And uh, after that, a lot of things happened. Uh, professor Ito became full-time uh, professor uh, as of this spring. And also, uh, we have two uh, promotions. Uh, Naoki Yoshida, who has, who has been here already as a tenured professor of the University of Tokyo, is, became officially uh, a full professor. And also, Shigeki Matsumoto was promoted a tenured full professor. So, well, let's uh, uh, congratulate all of them. And uh, we have a new leadership of the institute. Uh, Professor Yokoyama became a member of the steering committee, uh, which is the most important decision-making body of this institute. And Kai Martens, who is sitting uh, behind there, raising hand, uh, is a new director of the Kamioka branch. So any complaint about Kamioka should go to him. <laughs> and similarly, uh, Barclay Satellite has a new director, uh, Akito Kusaka. And uh, as I said, uh, our new uh, postdoctoral fellow will be introduced later this morning. Uh, we have lunch time uh, at uh, 3 o'clock every day. And uh, in order for us to be able to have intelligent conversations, meeting with each other, especially with people in different areas, I felt that it's important that uh, we know, we, all of us know what our new postdoctoral fellows are doing so that uh, when we see them next time at, the, at tea time, uh, we can start a conversation with them. Uh, we have several uh, prizes that were awarded to our member, and this is very important. This is uh, uh, objective evidence that we are doing very well. Uh, Ken Nomoto, who is uh, sitting, I think, in the back, I think, raising hand, uh, received a very prestigious Hans Bethe Prize uh, from uh, American Mathematical Society. This is uh, 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 with David Gross, who is currently the president of the American Physical Society. This is our uh, ceremony photograph. And this is uh, uh, Ken, and you haven't changed at all all, the, all these years, uh, with uh, Hans Bethe. I believe this is taken at Aspen Center for Physics, I think, at the Bethe Hall at Aspen Center for Physics. And prize citation is particularly wonderful. It said, for his lasting contribution to our understanding of nuclear astrophysics. So this basically says that what he, he, he has done is a textbook. Uh, a discovery that we uh, all scientists aspire to have their discovery in the te uh, in, the, in textbooks, and uh, so so this is uh, what this citation says. So congratulations, congratulations! <laughs> and we have many our re other recognitions that our, uh, our faculty member and associate member has received. Uh, I would like to point out that Takeo Higuchi is elected deputy chair of Institutional Board of Bell II, uh, which is a chair elected position. And so this is very important because Bell II just started running and the science run uh, has started. So he will be the chair at the uh, prime time of the Bell II experiment. So, so this shows the, the, his leadership uh, in the Bell II experiment. And uh, uh, HSC is also in the uh, science phase. And uh, the, 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 the collaboration produced 40 papers uh, uh, last year. And uh, uh, Teppei Okumura, uh, Chiaki Hikage, and other members uh, of the institute uh, of IPMU, uh, uh, one of the papers that they wrote received the uh, uh, Astronomical Society of Japan paper prize. And uh, then uh, there are many other prizes uh, uh, awarded to our associate member, including Masamune Oguri, who was uh, uh, a former assistant professor at this institute. Uh, uh, Norimichi 
Hirakawa, oh, I, I misspelled his name, uh, excuse me. Uh, he was artist in residence, uh, spent uh, a month here, and then uh, uh, he produced art piece based on his experience, and that was awarded uh, uh, some prestigious prize. Uh, uh, actually, this is uh, run by Japanese government, and the citation is wonderful. Citation says that this is an art piece that was inspired by conversation with uh, physicists and uh, mathematicians and theoretical physicists. So this, these are all wonderful. Uh, so uh, so these, there are all, all these uh, wonderful prizes awarded to our members. Uh, I'm also delighted that uh, uh, the uh, innovation by our administrative staff, uh, Kabri IPMU app for smartphone, uh, rec uh, is recognized by the president of the University of Tokyo uh, uh, and given special prize in business transport uh, formation. And this is a sixth award uh, in the business transformation prize. And uh, I'm particularly happy that uh, this uh, uh, innovation came from administrative staff themselves, uh, their own initiative. It's not directed by us, just came out from their own initiative. So, so it's a wonderful uh, recognition of uh, our administrative staff member. Uh, so last year, ar around this time, uh, we purchased a torch. Uh, this is the torch that uh, Hitoshi wrote, uh, bought in $15 at uh, San Francisco airport. Uh, we, we are keeping it so that uh, when the next uh, director uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in, in, in the next passing of the torch in uh, four years from now. Uh, Hitoshi is still our member. Uh, he is a university professor. He has been made university of uh, uh, professor of the University of Tokyo and is also a Hamamatsu professor uh, of IPMU. And uh, with this, uh, we expect him to spend roughly five, five months a year in residence at IPMU. And I see Hitoshi here, so I'm counting this as one day towards your five months. <laughs> so, uh, so we have been, uh, for the last uh, a year, we have done serious planning exercise. And this is what actually I announced at the time of uh, my inauguration, that I said that it is good time for us to re reflect upon the progress we have made over the past 11 years and plan for the future. And uh, 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 within a week after I was inaugurated, I appointed the uh, uh, planning committee, uh, these people, including Yankee Kim, who is the uh, chair of the physics department of the University of Chicago, and David Spager, who is a, a director of one of the center at the Frank, uh, uh, Flatiron Institute, and several other uh, uh, members uh, of this institute. And uh, the committee worked very diligently. Uh, they met 11 times, and uh, many interviews with faculty and also outside experts. We had a symposium uh, on tabletop experiment uh, for us to learn opportunities. And the final report was submitted to me uh, uh, at the end of August. And they identify uh, three priorities, uh, which are astronomical survey project, CMB project, and the Kamioka project. And they also recommended us uh, to start new initiative. One is a data uh, analysis initiative, and the other is a dark mat uh, tabletop dark matter experiment, or more broadly, any small experiment uh, uh, about uh, fundamental physics. Uh, for data analysis initiative, what it means is that, uh, in particular, all these uh, three, three priority projects are data intensive. Uh, they produce a large amount of data. And so we have to, it, it, it's good, it would be a good idea to try to come up with a, a global plan for the institute so that we can share resources necessary uh, to cope with uh, 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 this data uh, analysis uh, needs. And uh, I ha actually, we had a faculty meeting last month uh, to discuss this, and I have encouraged faculty member to come up with a white paper uh, to recommend me uh, uh, plan for a uh, plan. So uh, let me tell you a few things about uh, each one of these three projects. So as I said, Hyper Supreme Calm is now in science phase and uh, producing data, and last year uh, they published uh, 40 papers, and uh, somehow this video is not going well. But uh, uh, this is a, a three-dimensional uh, 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 image uh, of dark matter distribution. And it's, they also determined uh, uh, the, some of the cosmological parameters. I will discuss a little bit more about this later. And also the assembly of PFS uh, has begun, and uh, we expect the science operation in 2022. So we look forward to that. We had a wonderful news uh, at the end of August 
that the uh, Ministry of Education uh, are requesting 1.8 billion yen in the fiscal year 2020 budget to begin construction of Hyper Kamio Kande. University of Tokyo is also seriously committing fund uh, to, uh, 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 to, to contribute to it. And uh, uh, so this is a big uh, news for uh, our Kamioka project. And uh, just to, uh, quantitatively, uh, Hyper Kamiokande will accumulate statistics 20 times faster than T2K. <laughs> and uh, it will enable us to find uh, the, uh, uh, so there are many things that uh, Hyper Kamiokande do. Uh, it will help us understand the origin of CP violation in lepton sector. And uh, perhaps, discover proton decays uh, predicted by one of the grand unified models, and also uh, may detect uh, supernova neutrino uh, more efficiently. Uh, another great news uh, on the CMB front is that JAXA, uh, well, in fact, uh, the uh, uh, ISAS of JAXA has approved the launch of Lightbird satellite in eight years from now to perform all-sky CMB polarization survey and test cosmic inflation. So this is the only uh, CMB polarization satellite that is going to be launched in the next decade. And uh, we are uh, one of the leaders uh, of, of this project. So we're very much looking forward uh, to this project. And uh, so, 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 so this, is, uh, this is a little bit cr a crowded graph. But uh, so this purple uh, is expected. I think Hazumi signs down there so he can correct me. But uh, this is where the light bird is uh, want to get to in detecting uh, CMB polarization. And uh, this is a good area to look at compared to uh, many of the uh, observations on the Earth, because you can differentiate from the effect from the dust in galaxies. So there will be a distinct signature of primordial gravitational waves. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, the, we will have opportunity to sort of compare the result with uh, some of the more sharpened swampland prediction uh, in coming years. So this raises the question of how to pay for all these uh, activities, uh, these wonderful activities. So uh, as you know, we have been very generously funded by the WPI program uh, for the first year uh, by subtracting the money we need to build the building. Uh, we had about 11 to 12 uh, million dollar uh, US dollar per year. And, but this funding will disappear uh, uh, in 2020. So the, my goal is to secure permanent funding to replace uh, WPI funding and try to fund this at the same level. So how do we do that? Well, I can't tell you the detail, but uh, I, I think we have a realistic plan to achieve this uh, in combination of public and private funding. And uh, uh, we are succeeding in doing that. So, so what I would like to ask you is to focus on science, assuming that we will work for this implementation. So another thing that uh, uh, I uh, uh, discussed in my inauguration ad inaugural address uh, is diversity. So uh, at the in my inaugura inaugural address, uh, I reaffirmed my commitment to provide an inclusive and supportive environment to the diverse group of people in our community. And uh, uh, during the last year, uh, I have introduced several initiatives. Uh, we now have code of conduct uh, for all our members and the visitors. And uh, we are going to introduce uh, a bias training in our hiring process. And uh, Professor Yokoyama is going to tell us about that. And uh, we have also had our, uh, our harassment training reviewed. And uh, in fact, this came out from the uh, weekly women's lunch that uh, Professor Ito has, been, has initiated, and this has been very helpful. And one of the things that came out from this lunch meeting was that uh, this harassment training will need to be revised, and it has been revised. And uh, we have been reviewing our hiring and recruitment practices to uh, promote diversity, and we have also introduced the diversity requirement on our workshops. That uh, uh, if you look at uh, our past uh, uh, co uh, conference uh, group photo, uh, very often we have all male photos, and uh, that's not acceptable anymore. And so, so we have a diversity requirement that actually have been implemented at Aspen Center for Physics for many years, where I was a president, and know that uh, it works. So, so we have started to do that here as well. 
So uh, as I said, this uh, uh, weekly women's lunch uh, uh, that initiated by uh, Professor Ito has been uh, very successful and uh, uh, give uh, opportunity for uh, uh, female uh, members to network, but also gave us lots of very useful uh, input to uh, improve our operation. And Professor Yokoyama has been very helpful to, uh, in advising uh, and provided me a helpful advice on hiring and recruitment practices and harassment and bias training. And she has been made a member of the steering committee and uh, in her cap new capacity, she's also uh, informing us uh, on in during our hiring process. So we now have code of conduct. So I would like to read it. So it is a policy of the Kabri IPMU that all members and visitors will conduct themselves in a professional manner that is welcoming and free from any form of discrimination, harassment, or retaliation. Members and visitors will avoid any inappropriate action or statement based on individual characteristics such as age, race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, marital, status, nationality, or political affiliation. Disruptive or harassing behavior of any kind will not be tolerated. Harassment includes, but is not limited to, inappropriate or intimidating behavior and language, unwelcome jokes or comments, unwanted touching or attention, offensive images, photography without permission, and stalking. Members and visitors will treat each other with respect to create a collegial, inclusive, and professional environment at the Kabri IPMU. Now, we have graduate students. Uh, we used to have not graduate students. WPI program initially uh, uh, instructed us not to have students. But then in recent years, they changed the position and they're encouraging us to have graduate students, which is very welcoming to us. And uh, we have this wonderful Oxford uh, 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 PhD fellowship program where uh, we have official supervisor here at IPMU that they, these faculty members go to Oxford to select a student. And uh, this student uh, spent a couple of years at IPMU and returned to Oxford to defend their PhD thesis. And we are very happy that the first group of those students just got PhD and some has got them uh, has, has, some has moved on to postdoctoral fellowship uh, uh, programs. And I see a couple of uh, Oxford students here, so maybe you can raise a hand, and I uh, welcome to IPMU. Uh, so we also have a new graduate uh, program called WISE program. Uh, it's an interesting acronym that uh, 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 MEXT came up with. And uh, uh, so it's for the next seven years. And it's an elite graduate program, uh, very selective and funded very generously at 20 million. And the purpose is to modernize our uh, uh, graduate program, and uh, including research rotation and other initiative. And uh, Hitoshi Murayama is a coordinator. So it does many good things. It will do many good things. But this should also uh, enable us to have more access to students currently all mathematicians and six physicists at IPMU can are officially affiliated to a uh, department and they can uh, supervise graduate students. But there are a few more physicists who want to have this kind of status. And we now have leverage, in some sense, uh, to uh, make this happen. And so, so uh, this is being uh, discussed. We have renewed the external advisory committee. So these are new members with Josh Freeman at Fermilab as a chair of the committee. And they came uh, at the end of June uh, for a couple of days uh, to review uh, our status. And uh, uh, they said the interesting thing that uh, my mission is to turn a very successful startup into a sustainable established organization. And uh, they said, said not very nice thing that, uh, that, that we have made very good start. And they particularly liked they particularly liked uh, our new initiative in postdoc hiring, mentoring, and the diversity initiatives, etc. We have a new colloquium series. And uh, 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 Tad Takahashi, who is sitting there, is a the chair of the committee, and uh, 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 Professor Ito and uh, uh, Hitoshi Murayama are, are a member of the committee. Uh, uh, the colloquium happens every month. 
and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the it has been a lot. There have been lots of interesting talks. Uh, so there'll be one by Alex. Uh, uh, next month, and then followed by uh, Takeo Higuchi, I believe he will tell us about progress in Bell 2. So uh, please come to Colloquia, it's a very important uh, part of intellectual life. You have a comment to make, Tad. Oh, so schedule is revised. Okay, excuse me. And also, uh, a mo uh, another important thing is to please make sure to send, uh, if you have any good idea about Colloquium speakers, or maybe not so good idea, but may turn out to be a good idea, to the uh, colloquium committee so that uh, they have some. So, so far, actually, most of the speaker had been uh, IPMU member because uh, uh, we thought that uh, it would be good for us to introduce ourselves and uh, so for us to get to know what we are doing. But now we are moving into the stage where we can have outside speakers. So. Uh, we already have a lot, there have already been a lot of good ideas, but I would like to encourage the, uh, you to uh, send an uh, idea to them. So one of the pleasure of being the director of this institute is that I hear lots of interesting science. And uh, I'm a mathematical physicist, so I don't know much about uh, experiment or observation. So this is actually a great opportunity for me to learn about it. So I only have uh, eight minutes before the talk by Professor Yokoyama, so I cannot encompass everything that we are doing. So I thought that I should focus on just a couple of things that I learned for the last couple of years. So, so for the future anniversary, I will talk about other things. So if your research area is not covered in the next seven minutes, uh, don't despair. That <laughs> I'm just going to uh, 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 say a couple of things about uh, 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 things that, uh, uh, that I learned uh, for the last uh, few months, and uh, which is about neutrino and uh, our universe, and how our experimental program uh, uh, addressing this from various different perspectives. So there are various ways that neutrino come from the universe. Uh, one is a, a neutrino from supernova. And of course, uh, this is uh, very well known. Uh, uh, Professor Koshiba received the Nobel Prize uh, in 2015 for pioneering contribution. <laughs> oh, yeah, so this is the wrong date. Yeah, yes. Yeah. For pioneering contribution to astrophysics, in particular for detection of cosmic neutrino. So this is actually a wonderful uh, 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 recognition. Uh, I actually almost, uh, more or less witnessed what, what happened. So, so, so I was actually assistant professor uh, in uh, uh, 1989, I think, it, it, it 1988. And uh, when uh, the uh, supernova explosion, uh, reached, the, 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 the light from supernova explosion reached the Earth. And uh, uh, so this was also the year when Professor Koshiba was retiring. And, uh, 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 in those days, the retirement age was 60. And then uh, uh, the professor, uh, retiring professor gives, uh, uh, the, 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 it was customary for retiring professor to give retire, uh, the last final lecture. So, so the, the, the news of supernova came in the beginning of the week when Koshiba was to give the final lecture. So it was, I believe, Monday. And uh, uh, the, there was a fax message from uh, friends abroad uh, and uh, astronomer. Uh, to the uh, Koshiba's group, saying that the uh, neutrino explode, exploded, and uh, did you see it? And uh, so they quickly went to their data and uh, discovered, uh, 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 identified some uh, relevant part of the data, and sent uh, a magnetic tape by uh, Takubin to <laughs> Hongo campus. Uh, later, I was talking to Katsuhiko Sato, and he was very upset that they sent this by Takubin. Those things they should let one of the graduate students hold like <laughs> that and, and <laughs> bring to campus. But anyway, so it arrived on the day of the final lecture of uh, Professor Koshiba. And uh, uh, so I remember uh, I went to the final lecture and Koshiba talked about uh, 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 the history of building the Kamioka uh, uh, laboratory. And uh, uh, of course, he, he didn't say anything about supernova, but I saw a drop of tear in his eye. And, uh, and then the, uh, the group started to working very uh, 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 diligently on the data. In meanwhile, Koshiba went to uh, Atami Hot Spring for the weekend after the final lecture and came back and heard the great news that uh, there was actually 17 neutrinos detected at Kamioka. 
But that was 30 years ago. So, 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 so we haven't de detected any supernova neutrino since then. But so this is, act I stole this from Mark's uh, uh, slide, that uh, there are thousands of supernova explosions per hour in the visible universe. So, so those past neutri uh, uh, supernova uh, uh, produced a lot of diffused neutrino at the background. And this carries very important information on the evolution of the universe and also how the supernova explosion happened. And uh, it would be great to detect this. And Mark uh, and uh, John Beacon had an idea to add gadolinium to the water Cherenkov detector to enhance the ability to detect the supernova neutrino. So they have been doing, uh, so, so Mark and also, uh, and also uh, the, the Kamioka group had been doing R&D uh, called EGATS for the last 10 years. And then finally, uh, for the last few years, Super K collaboration and then T2K collaboration approved the addition of gadolinium to Super Kamiokande. So this is ha now happening. And uh, so, so this is a, a timeline that uh, I got from Mark. So, so we are here. And uh, uh, so uh, they're going to start adding gadolinium next year or the year after? March. And then. Uh, I'm told that they are expecting to have collected the world's first diffused supernova neutrino before 22. So that's something that uh, we can look forward to. I would also like to tell you about uh, neutrino mass and the structure of uh, 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 the universe. So the mass, the, uh, so, so this, 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 this I, I just used this same, same uh, uh, slide, just changed the photograph. <laughs> and the description of the prize. There are so many Nobel Prizes, so that's a problem. Uh, so, so the citation of uh, 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 a Nobel Prize to uh, one of our members, uh, principal investigator of Cabri IPMU, uh, is a discovery of uh, that the neutrino have mass. And so this is a very important uh, discovery. And uh, in fact, uh, this is also one of the first paper that the Cabri IPMU, in those days it was called IPMU, produced uh, that uh, uh, Masahiro Takada and with a couple of other people wrote this paper uh, submitted on December 25th, Christmas Day. What, why, why, what were you doing? You, were your family happy <laughs> you're doing this? <laughs> so, so, so it's called impact of massive neutrino on nonlinear matter power spectrum. So this means that, uh, the, that the, how the, the neutrino mass is, is, is relevant for the uh, formation of a structure of the universe. And in fact, uh, this was more refined recently by uh, the group by uh, Yoshida. So, so this is actually his simulation uh, using a K supercomputer. And he's actually solving the Boltzmann equation directly. And so you can see that the distribution of a neutrino and dark matter is very, very different. Uh, and dark matter is light and very diffuse. And uh, so depending on the mass of a neutrino, uh, the, so, so the neutrino distribution changes. So that means that uh, so if, you if, you, if you can figure out the structure of the, uh, st structure of the universe uh, more uh, precisely, then you can actually have impact, or you, can, you can actually have, can have a constraint on the mass of neutrino. So, so this is uh, the forecast. So this uh, gray area is the result of Planck satellite. And then uh, this is a, a hyper spermicum, and then this is a forecast. So if you combine all these data, then you can actually narrow down. In fact, uh, it looks like you can actually tell whether a neutrino has a mass or not. Okay, so, so this is a prediction. Uh, this, is a, this is a projection, so this is not actual data. But uh, this is what we expect to see once uh, PFS turns on. But there are more news, because uh, we can also learn about uh, neutrino mass from uh, 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 B mode polarization that the uh, CMB group here are doing. So what happens is that uh, uh, CMB is, of course, uh, uh, emitted at the beginning of the universe. But then it has taken many, many uh, uh, years, billions of years, uh, to reach us. And the meanwhile, go through the universe. And uh, uh, so that has an impact on, the, on its polarization. And then uh, so this is a, a this is a graph, this is a simulation. So there are three lines, three curves. So these three curves correspond to different uh, neutrino masses. And compared to this, uh, the, primordial, the effect of primordial gravitational wave is over here. 
So, so this can also constrain the mass of neutrino. So, so, so if you combine both PFS and light birds, you can actually further narrow down. So this, was, this, this red area is this area, I believe. And then you can further constrain uh, this to this area. So this is a sort of very interesting sort of orchestration of various different science that we are doing. And I can add one more thing. So we have, I have actually a prediction. So this is uh, my prediction uh, of the mass of a neutrino. So this is, uh, so I have been working with Cameron Bauer and others about prediction of quantum gravity to low energy physics. In my case, low energy physics means standard model of particle physics. And uh, so in particular, in one of our paper, uh, this is one of more speculative papers that I wrote, uh, that we are claiming that, uh, well, this is actually inferred from what we claim, but uh, the mass of neutrinos related to the bounded from above by the, the, the dark energy density. So, so, so there is also theoretical uh, 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 contribution to this type of uh, 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 conversation. So, so I'm very much looking forward uh, to learn more about the mass of a neutrino. And uh, uh, so this is a great orchestration of various different projects, and uh, in particular, the orchestration of three priority projects uh, of Cavalry IPMU. And uh, so this is wonderful, but uh, we are also useful. So, so what you, we do can also benefit the society. So I'd like to end with uh, mentioning that uh, the group by Ta Ta Takahashi uh, has been working. So one of the things that they are doing is to turn their expertise in the gamma and X-ray imaging uh, to life science, and in particular, uh, figuring out the, the uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the how to cure cancer, and so so they have uh, they have both lab both in the second building, and also at the uh, cancer center across the street, and now they are actually have, uh, starting a new company, and uh, so so this is a great example that basic science benefits the society. So there are a lot of wonderful things ha is happening. Our future is very bright. So this is a great time to celebrate. So happy 12th anniversary. Thank you.